Jason, huge uh, weekend of football coming as always, always feels the same. Um, I'm going to start off in, in Ulster, your home province. Um, there's two semi-finals on, Derry Connolly against uh, Kilku, but Clintippert against Dave Connell, not a bad place to start. And um, Anthony Thompson was talking about he'd just be delighted to get across the line because they beat them in 2012 here. Mm-hmm. Um, Clintippert after beating Cross McGlynn, they'll surely feel like they can actually kick on now. Oh yeah, massively. Um, you know, Liam Connell have a lot to say about that as well, but beating Cross McGlynn was huge. You know, uh, Joe Kernan was even saying this a couple of weeks ago that this is a very young Cross McGlynn team coming up and, you know, when you see the players that they have, like the O'Neills and that, that they are going to be a big force in a, in a couple of years. Uh, so maybe they're just not ready yet. Like they're, you know, they've they went off the radar for a couple of years, so they're probably in transition. But now they're they're starting to come back, and I can see them being a massive force in mm. a certain year too. But Clint Everett, as you said, um, beating Cross McGlynn still psychologically is massive. Like, and when you have Conor McManus in the field, you know he's still just an absolute gem of a forward. Like yeah. he's still he's still up there with the best in the country. A lot of people rank him as the best. Um, you know his name hasn't been spoken much this summer because Monaghan had a disappointing championship but um, like Neil Connell will do a lot to, to stop him now it'd be interesting to see who they put on him there's, there's a lot of candidates but um, you know Glenties get we call them Glenties at home but a lot, a, they get slated a lot for their negative tactics and that but the one thing I'll tell you that they never never stop and they never give up and that that kind of showed in those three games against Gidor in the county final and um, against Cas- Castle Rahan in fairness to them, the Glantys boys, a lot of them were on the bear for a day or two after eventually getting over the line and you couldn't like blame them. Four games in a short space of time. Yeah, like yeah. They must have been fairly gassed after all that. They had to have been. They had to have been. And I know there was talk about player welfare issues and that. And you could see where it was coming from, but they uh, they looked very, very comfortable against Castle Rahan, mm-hmm. you had to have said. And I think one of one of the lads from Leaf Connell said to, to somebody afterwards that, you know, they could have won that game by 15 points if they hadn't been through what they went through and the, the celebrations mm-hmm. that they were entitled to afterwards as well. Now they're going to come up against, like, as far as I know, Vinnie Corey's playing in a full forward. That's where John yeah. McEntee has put him mm-hmm. across McLean influence. Again, of course, yeah. Conor McMahon is sparking off him. I mean, do you, do you, you see them being able to hold them to enough scores? Because Glenty's probably not that free scoring of a team. No, they're not. They're not. A lot of people think they're not as free scoring as they should be either. When mm. you've when you've got the likes of Kieran Thompson in the field, and um, you know boys like Dara Galler and um, Dermot Brick Malloy aren't. Who's coming of, on? I believe. Yeah, they aren't really starting anymore, mm. which is which is you know a lot of probably raises a few eyebrows. But you've um, young Jack McKelvey there in their attack, um, great great score taker as well, and you've. You've Anthony Thompson bomb, bombing forward sometimes too, so um, they probably should be getting more on the board than they have been getting. But you know they were probably trying to just focus on keeping Gidor down as much as possible in those three Donegal golf finals as well. So you probably have to take that into account. So they might um, come out of the traps a wee bit more on Saturday night in Noma, but we'll wait and see. And put your neck on the block as a Donegal man. Who's going to win this? Oh, it's so hard to call Shane. Like, yeah. um, and God knows what sort of weather it's going to be. Yeah, yeah exactly. Know. And Oma as well, very heavy pitch. Very, yeah. If there's any sort of rain at all, the pitch it's very, very heavy. It's not the worst for wind, but um, it's so hard to call. Like, like Gidor won in Ulster last year was massive for Donegal club football because our clubs have been the weapon boys in Ulster for for so many years before that. Like Gidor were the only club in existence since. Um, you know, that's St Joseph's amalgamation done it in 1975 or 1976 or something so they were the only current existing club to win Ulster mm. in Donegal so that was huge and um, even though they had three tasty battles with them in the county final uh, Neve Connell will take massive uh, confidence and encouragement from what Gidor done last year and we're not the worst in Donegal for getting behind clubs when they when they go into their Ulster adventure either like the whole county was behind Gidor last year as well so there will be a lot of neutrals at that game in Oma from, from Monaghan and Donegal so there should be a good crowd there too mm. Saturday night lights I'd expect a few thousand there anyway Derry Donnelly against Kilku is like it's a battle of two teams that have been on the Ulster road many many times mm. without really getting across the line like it's this is Kilku's eighth time going in there in nine seasons. Yeah. Lost a couple of finals to Cross McGlenn, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, Derry Connolly, five in a row in Fermanagh. Yeah. They'll, want, they'll want to kick on. After winning um, on penalties against Trillick, that's some way to do it. Yeah. Um, what kind of stands out to you about this game? And Kilku were coming in after beating Maharafelt, 
who won their first title in 41 years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's probably Kilku have been, it feels like they're a team that probably should have kicked on a little bit more by now. Yeah, you would think so. Like, but like, um, it's like the old circle of jumping is just such a hard one. Like, like it's, it's the, it's the old phrase that like Ulster's a minefield. Like, but it's really true, especially mm. when it comes to club level. You you never know what you're going to come up against, and you're kind of, you know, that winning winning that game against against Trelik and penalties was just massive for them. Like in in. Bristol Park, like there seemed to be a big crowd there as well. I, got, uh, I came across the traffic from afterwards, and you could you could feel the real buzz around from the cars coming out of uh, coming out of Bristol that night. So, um, like winning a game in penalties like that, it's it's not the nicest way to do it, but they'll, they'll take huge confidence from knocking out the throw championships. But as you said about Kilkenny as well, um, you'd hope that down football will start to go on a bit of an upward curve mm. again. Um, They've obviously been through a lot up there in recent weeks with the death of Eamon Burns and whatnot as well. So, um, yeah, they, they definitely should be kicking on and they'll, they'll definitely fancy their chances in our man someday anyway. Um, the junior football final is on this weekend in Ulster. I'm not expecting you to whole, uh, know a whole lot about football at that level. Black Hill of Monaghan against Boncrana of Donegal. Um, how much? How well would you even know Boncrana, a Killy Bags man yourself? Uh, not that well. It's very yeah. far away from us. Um, but, like... Football up there has been on the rise for a while. Like, like, God, when we were playing underage, you never would have went up there. Maybe to play them in a play in a schools game or something like that. But it's great to see them in a in a junior final because it, you know to be that'll be very much soccer country up in that part of the county. So um, it's great to see the GA on the rise up there and a lot of the clubs up there are doing well. So um, look, Bunkrana have uh, they have a lot of good young players and. Um, like a junior title to them would mean the absolute world. Like, how um, strong is is soccer in um, in Donegal? Because everyone thinks of the the Celtic links and the players that have gone across mm -hmm. there. Like, is foot Gaelic football still massively dominant, or is soccer actually in certain parts of the county number one? Uh, in certain parts of the county, soccer is still be number one. But <coughs> Gaelic football took a huge spike, obviously, after the All Ireland one in twenty twelve, and the success that the Donegal team has had from that in terms mm -hmm. of Ulster titles since then as well. And uh, getting to the final in fourteen, and even what Kid Ord on last year won an Ulster, um, an Ulster club title, and underage teams around all the clubs seem to be really thriving, and that's why you're seeing the likes of Bunkrana now in Ulster junior finals too. So, um, to answer your question, by and large, Gaelic football still would be number one, but there are pockets where soccer is still massive. Soccer is still massive in Killy Beggs as well, mm -hmm. um, so soccer will always have a have a big say, and there's. I blame Seamus Coleman for that. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, your <laughs> buddy. Um, so the Munster Club semi-finals run this weekend also. Milltown, Melbay of Clare against Clonmel Commercials of Tip. And Nemo Rangers of Cork against us and Stacks of Kerry. Funnily enough, there's actually three home Cork clashes against Kerry clubs at different, um, at different, in different competitions this weekend, which I'll touch on. But I saw Clonmel play last week against J.K. Brackens in the Tipperary County Final. So they're up against Milltown, Melbay. But my God, were they impressive. They absolutely battered J.K. Brackens, would be largely from Templemore. Mm. Uh, Michael Quinlevin, who's heading away and yeah. missed uh, the season for tip next year. Just watching him, like he didn't play inside at number 14 because as you can imagine, uh, Brackens would have had everyone around him, which is yeah. probably what Milton Malbay would want to do as well, just mm. surround him from all corners. He played more or less outside the blanket, in and around the 45. And at times he got the ball 50, 60 yards out, and he'd just take off on a solo. And he didn't just kind of nudge past players. It was as if he was just going through the gears yeah, and yeah. just bursting past lads without that much effort to hit. Mm. Um, but it, I, I think the, the thing for Milton Malbe is that it's not just him. You know, you've Jack Kendy there. Well, there's three Kendy brothers. Uh, Seamus Kendy. Yeah. I think there's an awful lot of threats there. And I, I'd give uh, Clon Mill a very good chance here. Yeah, definitely as well. Milton Malby might. You don't know how a replay, how a team can handle a county final replay either. Like they mm. take him through two massive tests against Kilmaria, I reckon they're 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 their neighbours. So um, like it can be it can be hard to know how a replay can affect the team when they go into a provincial campaign. But Clonmel commercials, as you said, like they've they've been here before. It's not new territory for them either. Like they've won in All Ireland a few years ago. Ah, yeah, they were. That would have been some fairy tale. They yeah. were very very unlucky. They, played some serious football that, that year and they were one of the stories of the club championship but mm. Quinlan as you said what a loss he's going to be for, for Tipperary next year you know they, 
David Perry must be pulling his hair out already, oh, losing a player so. like that because he's just such a talent. Yeah, so Milton Malbay or St. Joseph's, they uh, beat Rackormack 111 to 10 points. Rackormack from Watford. Mm. Probably, you know, it probably isn't like a signal of intent to beat a Watford champion. And they have had good teams over the years, so that's nothing yeah. to do down Watford. But Clamell, 319 to 7 points against Brackens. I think it was like 12 3 at half time. Again, it's not exactly like J.K. Brackens are multi-county title winners. They're not. Mm. But it was just the manner of it. I was very impressed, um, I have to say. So Nemo against Austin Stacks. Like, so most people would have seen last weekend that David Clifford would have inspired East Kerry to yeah, be... Yeah, yeah. They, by double scores, beaten Dr. Crokes in the county final. But of course, they're a divisional side and mm. it would be insane to let divisional sides through to the yeah, Monster yeah. Championship, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, or any other championship. But Austin Stacks, like, they haven't played since the end of September. And because they won the uh, the Kerry Club Championship in April, that means they're the team that go forward rather yeah. than Dr. Crokes. Yeah. It's a very weird situation that you have a team that hasn't played since the end of September coming up against um, a team in Nemo Rangers that's played so recently. Mm. Yeah, and like the word is that Austin Sachs have been trading away because when they saw how the four semi finalists in Kerry whittled down, they were probably like, look, there's three regional teams here mm. or divisional teams, so we're going to have a great chance of getting through. Like, and, they took, uh, by all accounts, they kept trading away, kept plugging away quietly in the background. But it is, it is a bit of a mad situation. But um, Kerry Club Football team, sent, I was trying to explain how it works to, to me, how you met the other night, and I just got flabbergasted and <laughs> made a cup of tea. Um, yeah. I don't know where you would start. But um, yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Like, the, <laughs> like are they lying in the long grass waiting to produce the serious sucker punch here? But Nemo are just. Like they're so good. Like they were in an All Ireland final a couple of years ago, and they've come back and won it in Cork again. And they did get battered in that All Ireland final a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah, Carfin, but you're battered Carfin yeah. better most teams. Carfin or Carfin? Huh? Yeah. Carfin or Carfin? <laughs> so like one nine to to nine points against Newcastle West for Nemo the last day. Probably not an amazing scoreline, and I mean I know mm. I mentioned that with with St Joseph's against Rack or McGeeter, but. Uh, on the basis of Nemo having played several games since Austin Gleeson, or Austin Gleeson, Austin Stacks were last out on the field, yeah. I'd probably be giving, giving him the nudge for that. Ah, yeah, you would think so. Like that, that lack of game time, like I'm sure Stacks <coughs> were playing the odd challenge here and there. They might have they might have got challenges off teams that are still playing league football and that, but yeah, like Nemo are hard favourites to come through that one, surely. Yeah, we might be inspiring them to, to prove us wrong now. Yeah, yeah. we could be. Um, so I mentioned that there was a couple of other Cork and Kerry clashes this weekend. So Kilshanig of Cork against Naguil. So Kil, uh, Kilshanig, they won their first Cork Junior A football championship since 1996 last week. And uh, the goalkeeper, Colin O'Day, was talking about how it was his. He's been playing for 19 years, or 19 years, as the, as the two Johnnies yeah. would say, getting his title. But imagine how much uh, muck... Uh, Jack Barry is going to run in this particular game because yeah. even at inter-county level he's a very powerful runner so what's he going to do at junior level? Yeah, he's just going to pull the strings isn't he? You can just see him just plucking them out of the sky all day long and mm. feeding it through and getting a couple of scores himself probably he's, he's such a titanic machine like yeah. um, well look again we're not going to know a whole, a whole pile about this game yeah. that's just to touch on that one and that's a monster quarter final another one is Croom against Ballyduffloor of um, so Croom of Limerick against Ballyduffloor of Waterford so I was reading an article by Phil Fanning in the Waterford News and Star and he was talking about how St. Sabres and Rack Gormick as I've just mentioned they were knocked out of the monster intermediate and senior so Ballyduffloor they're uh, carrying the hopes of a first ever monster club football title for the Dacia because they've never won a provincial title at any grade. So, I mean, yeah. again, we're not going to know a whole pile about them, but um, there you go. They, they reached a Munster Junior decider in 2016, and some of their players, I mean, I think people would have heard of uh, Callum Lyons, the, the county yeah. hurler. Yeah. There's Cormac and Ronan Murphy, Marcus Millay, um, Jack Lyons as well, Declan Chasty, and Emmett Power. So the reward would be a home semi final against Tip Champions Monlohan. I wonder is Owen Kelly going to be playing there? Yeah, it would be an interesting one. Yeah. Like just, just to touch on Waterford, like they, they have produced some great footballers over the years, like, but the, just the strength of Hurling down there. Like, I, was, I remember, they end up Hurling, don't they? Yeah. I know we both know our, our friend Paul White, like, he's, he's football to the core, like, and uh, you done a great piece with him, I think, a couple of years ago, and i done a piece with him as well before about his soccer career, and he always, um, he's sadly had to give up football for, for injury reasons, but, like, he, 
Oh, he went back playing. Oh, oh yeah, I know yeah. he went back. Is, is he back playing again? He played again this year. But I know he I gave think, up water for Yeah, he might, he might be done now. Yeah, he sure was water for captain. Brilliant player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like he yeah. was always kind of just banging his head against the brick wall. But mm. so many uh, gifted footballers were, were going for the going for the hurdle. But that's that's just geography there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Croom would probably be relying on Dan Lucy for a certain amount of his scores. They were relegated from intermediate in 2013, haven't come back up since. Um, the Munster Intermediate grade, so back to a cork Kerry clash. Aerog of Cork against Temple No uh, of Kerry, and I think Temple No are going to cruise to the All-Ireland at this grade. Mm. But there are a lot of star players here. So for Temple No, and this, these players are why they will cruise to the All-Ireland. Adrian and Killian Splan, Tyg Morley, Gavin Crowley. Yeah. I mean, that much senior inter-county experience in an intermediate team. You can't escape yeah, that. Yeah, it's unbelievable, yeah. The flip side then on the It's Aero, hard to believe a club like that were junior last year, the year before. Like it's... <laughs> It's nuts. Um, so, Fintan O'Toole has done plenty of these podcasts of the 42. His brother, Ronan O'Toole, a, Kerry, a Cork senior, is on yep. the Aerobe team, along with Daniel Goulding, former star man. Man of the match in the 2010 All Ireland, was he? Yeah, he was. I think he yeah, might have been yeah, yeah. hit yeah. like nine, nine points or something like yeah, that. Yeah, still an incredibly gifted forward, like probably yeah. um, knocked the Cork career. A lot of people probably felt they knocked the Cork career in the head a wee bit too early, but. Still a class act, and yeah. undoubtedly still a class act at club level too. And I wonder will Kieran Sheehan start? Because you know he's not that back long from injury and being away mm. in the AFL and all that kind of stuff. He's come on in a couple of the, of the games here. They won the Premier Intermediate for the first time. So, like that is a fair collection of star names. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Game. So yeah. it makes it interesting. And uh, yeah, Colm O'Callaghan is in injury concern. He missed the under-21 loss to Ballancolic last week, and I was reading that in the Echo. And in the final game in the Munster Intermediate semi-final, St. Uh, Breckens of Clare against McCarkey Burris of uh, Tipperary. So McCarkey staged a comeback to beat Clonmel Oak, uh, 11 points to 1-6 in the Intermediate final, and St. Breckens dismissed Galtier Rovers, the Limerick champions, 2-13 to 1-11 in the quarterfinals of, the, of this provincial championship. So that's it for the football chat. Have we had all yeah. said? Yeah, looks good. Thanks very much, Jason. No problem, Jim.